Bonjour, bonsoir, bon après-midi tout le monde. Non, moi c'est Katie Williams et um, et moi je Dominique. So nous allons parler Creole, French Creole. Uh, I say it would just be like Creole Eve French, right? So I'm from Dominica, which is a very tiny island in Caribbean. And like, oh, we have approximately 65,000 to 72,000 people. Uh, about our country is that it's just very unique, the language. Uh, we have three main Creoles. Uh, they're called French Creole, which should be on Patois, um, which has a, a, a French base to it. So um, it has influence from the French, from the English, as well as African languages and some local languages. So that means that it, it's, it has like a huge mix. Uh, then we also have Kokoi, which was uh, which is more English based, but it was brought down by some in immigrants from a neighboring island called Antigua. So that's another language that we have. We also have our Kalinago language, or Carib, uh, which is less developed than the other languages, but it's still very um, dom predominant in our society. Okay. So Dominica, as I said, has three main languages, uh, actually four. <laughs> we have English, as most people do, we have French Creole, we have Kokwe, and we have Kalinago. So I'm going to start by talking a bit more about our French Creole language, which I love dearly. So I'll start with a small song, um, just two lines of it. So that's just like a small snippet. Um, one thing about Creole is that we love to sing it. Um, we're a country full of traditional folk, of like folk music and folk stories. So when it comes to our language, language is more than just something that is spoken. It's a way of life. It's 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 living. It's expression. It's being. And um, with our language, we take a lot of pride in it. So Dominica was, you know, caught in the middle between the French and the English, which means that our language itself is a struggle between those two <laughs> colonizers, um, unfortunately. But I think that has made our language very unique. Creole has been influenced by, or French Creole has been influenced by the French, obviously, which is a basis of the language, as well as many African languages and some Kalinago um, vocabs as well. So. Creole essentially is just like a mix of all these different cultures coming together, which I think is very interesting for language because you know it makes you think if a language can come together, why can't we, right? So um, I think that's pretty interesting. So today I'm going to show you the basic difference between um, French Creole and actual French. So um, I began by saying um, non moise. Um, which is, you know, my name is. So the first time you want to ask like, what's your name, you learn French, we'd be like, um, comment t'appelles tu, right? But we would say in French, um, in French, um, sakino, right? Which means, what's your name? Which is very, very different from the French saying. Then you'd say, so saying je m'appelle, you would say non moi c'est. Uh, so from that, I don't know if you've noticed that French Creole has a very woof. So compared to French that has like an uh, you no know, everyone in French class they would tell us to be like uh, uh, like you, you know you, you have to get that uh part but like for us it's it's very relaxed. So um, I decided to just take a few examples from actual family, right? So instead of saying um frère in French we would say foi. Um Mari, we would go Maui, Surir, we'd go sui. Um, before which means to smile. So this means to smile, this means husband, this means brother. Uh, I use these examples because I think it's very important to understand the um, emphasis we place on the W. Essentially moving from the R that um, we were supposedly, um, we supposedly had to use, um, change them into a W to kind of change the language a bit. Um, and I do think that the W is very Kalinago and very like African in spaces, so kind of going um, straight away from the whole European foundation of language that was once there, right? Okay? Uh, so some basics uh, you should know in every language. When, uh, what, and hola. If you go to Dominica, you hear kisa a lot. People say that in everything. Kisa! Uh, <laughs> one thing about our language, it really comes with the intonation, right? It's not a very, um, this is how you pronounce things. It's kind of, as I said, it's a way of being, it's expression, which means your emotions come with it. Um, it's not just about the accents and what you 
put emphasis on it's how you sing it our language is something that you sing that's why when i first came here people were like you you sing a lot when you speak I'm like yes because that's just how our language is formulated right it's about singing we tell stories through songs and not necessarily just just speaking right which is what i love most about the real language um an interesting thing about um real is that it was seen as very unrefined as a language and for people of a much lower class so you hear a lot of people um speak for example my dad speaks creole and it's one of those things where people are not very proud to speak uh when they go out but my dad has embraced it he speaks it at home um unfortunately we i have not been able to learn it as much i only know a few but i went back home and i decided to bring back this dictionary because i really do think that dictionaries bring legitimacy to languages right and I've decided to start going through and I brought it to my French classes because I do think that we need to start making a connection between um, what our colonizers taught us, um, but not just that, but also what the colonies got from that, which I think is very important because um, so very often the colonizer comes in and we, uh, we, we keep what they've given us. And I think language is one way in which we took what they gave us and we made it our own. Um, which is why I adore it so much. So, um, as I was saying, it, it, it's seen very as a language that's kind of low um, because it's so underdeveloped. But in around like in the late 1990s, I think, we kind of started to revive our language and make it a part of everyday life. So, what we do is we have a lot of Creole celebrations. So, for example, we have something called World Creole Music Festival that happens every year where everything is we speak in Creole, acts are in Creole, as well as something called Creole Day. Uh, Creole Day is pretty fun in that we dress up in um, different outfits. Uh, each outfit has its own name, so there's a French name and then there's a Creole name. Uh, for every outfit and it signifies something very specific it's just a day where we celebrate our culture and celebrate our language as not just something that we speak but as a lifestyle um, so for example that's reflected in our food in the way we greet people in the number of peaks a woman would wear on her head to signify certain things so i think it's very cool and in terms of naming the important one of the cool things about dominica as well is that um yes we have different languages but we also have um different names for different things. So for example, our national flower has three names. There's the uh, French Creole name, there's the Palinago name, and there's also the um, English name. So uh, that's it for French Creole. So um, Creole is very unique. Uh, it's really spoken Dominica wide. Um, depending on where you go, more, more so in the countryside, but it, it's more wide range than um, Kokoi, which is our other language, other Creole language that we have, right? Uh, Kokoi is more in the northeastern area of Dominica, for example. My dad is from Casa Cruz, which is not really northeast, but he speaks a lot more um, Creole, French Creole, um, that patois, whereas my mother is from the northeast, which would be like Marigot, um, Woodford Hill, and that region over there, she speaks something called Kokoi. Now, Kokoi is very different in that it's more English based as opposed to um, our French girl, which is French based, right? Uh, so, uh, so Kokoi was brought from immigrants um, who came from Antigua, which is very interesting I have to say how. Um, language even comes from a Wali Wali, a neighboring island and you know how we as a as a Caribbean region could take the English that was brought to us and then make it into our own. So Kokoi. Now Kokoi is kind of like we call it broken English. How politically correct that is I don't know because I don't think a language could ever be broken. I think it's something that is creative and that should be embraced. So it is technically called broken English and I'm gonna like it. So um so Kokoi, I can't do a lot of it but I can do some of it, um, especially if my mother speaks. It comes out really when people are angry. <laughs> Um, within most our languages, um, it's also something that's considered like a lot of people don't speak it, which I think is also problematic because I think it's very unique in itself. So, um, for example, if someone wanted to say, um, Oh my gosh, or like, What? or did that happen? Um, some they would shout out, Kupagam, uh, which is Change. like it doesn't sound like anything but it really is <laughs> once again for us our languages are really about um the expression of it um that's why there's not a lot of 
and I would say grammatical moves um, with our language like with cowboy and with grip. Um, and one thing I appreciated I guess growing up was that um, in primary school we learned we learned our history and our history is really centered around the native people because and just like it really taught us how much they suffered uh, in order to create our nation I think we gained such great respect for them because essentially there's no Dominican history without the Caribs and the Arawaks and just thinking about what they went through and their brutality and then how essentially the African slaves were just there to replace them after they began dying out so there was kind of that very strong connection um, also in primary school we learned a few of the kind of words that um, for example Mabuika Mabuika is something that I always like to say because it's just very warm and well for me thanks to someone um, I'm just keep taking a note of where you stand um, the thing with the Caribbean is that we are a mix of so many different things. Um, we are a mix of um, West African descendants, right? Of Europeans and of Kalinaka, right? So we we don't identify ourselves as one. Um, some people may say Afro West Indian or um, Native West Indian, but we just identify ourselves as West Indian, meaning that we are a mix of all these things. And that's how we, we express that way through our language. And I express that through Creole um, for me when I speak to people. So I guess comparing Dominica's uh, native people to the indigenous people in Canada, I think it's very different because, um, for example, our Carib chiefs are very well recognized, um, people know who they are, and I think here I should be able to go up to any minister in parliament or member in parliament and ask about um, indigenous culture in Canada and I should be able to get a response. It may not be the best response, but it should be a response nonetheless, because I do think if they are representing people of Canada, indigenous people from such an interior part of that culture that they should know about it, right? And in terms of their language, kind of just like having more discussions around language about what their language means to them because as I said before, language isn't just words. Language is a form of expression. It's a way of being. It's, it's, it's a life. It's who you are. It, it comes from your soul. It Language essentially is just like a a union of our history, of our culture, and kind of not being able to express that means that your your, your culture is limited, um, your way of life is limited, and I think that's very important. Um, so you know, just creating spaces for discussions, you know. When I go around campus, I want to be able to hear indigenous languages being spoken, because that's important. It means that culture is alive and well um, in Canada, and I think that's something lost sight of. Yeah, when I come here, I hear um, immigrants from all across speaking their languages. Um, where are indigenous languages? Um, why aren't those being, you know, given more, I guess, being showcased a bit more, I think, would be very important. Um, because I guess back home, we just really learn to appreciate um, the very few, um, the, the very small vocabulary that we have. And I really do wish that there was more to work with. Um, the Kanamba language because it is beautiful, the words are beautiful and that could help us understand our history so much more. So you have it, you know, the indigenous people out there take advantage of it to use it because it, it, there's so much that it can 